Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 25 of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover some really interesting things. I'm going to talk about calculating function roots. I'm going to talk about the remainder theorem, the factor theorem. We're going to learn how to solve really complex equations. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the leading coefficient test, which is going to make it very easy for us to guess exactly what an equation or a graph of an equation is going to look like just by looking at it. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so this time we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, we're going to be using a lot of the skills that we've developed in the past, but I will be reviewing them. First thing we're going to talk about is what is called the remainder theorem. And basically what it says is whenever you divide a polynomial, in this situation represented with fx by x minus c, c representing some constant, the remainder is going to be the value of using that constant in our formula. Now let me give you an example because that probably didn't make any sense. So let's say we have 2x squared minus 5x minus 1 divided by x minus Three. And what we're going to do is use synthetic division, which I've talked about in previous tutorials, to solve this. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take this 3 right here, and we're going to write it in, and we're going to put it in a box like that. Then we're going to take the 2 and put it right inside of here. Take the negative 5, put it right here, and the negative 1, and we're going to put it right there. Then we're going to draw a line underneath here and take this value of 2, drop it down inside of it, take the 3, multiply it times the 2, put a 6 up inside of here, and that's going to give us a value of 1. Again, take our 3 multiplied times a 1, that's going to give us a 3 right here, which is going to leave us with a final value of 2. And what that tells us is basically that this theorem is indeed true. By dividing by this negative 3, it is going to give us the result of using that negative 3 in our function. And we can verify that. So let's verify it to make sure it's true. So we'll say verify. And if we take 2 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 minus 1, this is going to be equal to 18 minus 15 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 2. So you can see right there that if we plug that 3 in and we use our synthetic division, which we learned about previously, which I just reviewed again, we get a final value of 2. So it's all been verified. So pretty cool information to know. And that brings us to the factor theorem. And what it says is whenever, once again, well, this should be a constant. Let me correct that. So this is wrong. We'll say function c, constant again, is equal to 0. Then x minus c is going to be a factor of the function, fx. And also, when xc is a factor, we know it's a factor of the function fx. Then we know that fc is going to be equal to 0. Now we're going back into factoring, which I also talked about in previous tutorials, which I will also review in this video. So another thing that is important to know is anytime that x minus c is a factor, that if we use that same constant, we're going to get a value of 0. Just really remember that part. And then I'm going to show you an example, and it's all going to make sense. All right, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try to solve this. I'm going to try to find all the factors for this pretty complicated function that we have right here, or equation, depending upon how you want to look at it. And we are basically going to be able to find our roots by graphing. So just simply by going and graphing this out, I can see that I have a root here at negative 4, a negative 2, and a 1. Okay? But we want to come in and we want to verify that. So what that graph tells us is that our factors for this function that we have right here are going to include x minus 1 and x plus 4 and x plus 3. All right, so that is what our graph tells us 
is the factors included in creating this equation. Well, we can come in and we can verify that. And I'm gonna show you how to verify it this way, and then I'm also going to go back and talk about how the factor theorem is going to help us also solve these problems. But what we wanna do is I want to verify that this is true. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna multiply these factors together and see if I get the function that we have across the top. All right, so this is gonna end up being x squared plus four x. So basically we are now in the part of the tutorial where we're starting to do really complicated things that are really cool and we're using other skills that we've developed over these past, what, 24 videos? So now we're able to do really cool things. All right, so that's the first part of multiplying this factor times this factor. And now what we're going to do is we will have x to the third, and I'm gonna multiply this result right here with this result right there. This is x to the third, and I think you understand how to multiply factors together. And if you don't, leave me a comment and I'll tell you precisely what video you need to watch to be able to do that. So this is four to the x plus three x squared plus 12 x minus three x minus 12. Well, just so you don't have to waste your time if you don't remember. Basically, how did I get this x2 right here? I multiplied x times x to get x2. How did I get this 4x? Well, I multiplied the, again, the x times the four to get four x. Then I took the negative one times this x to get the negative x. And then I took the negative one times the four to get the negative four, all right? So that's how I did it. And then you just take all these values and multiply them towards this factor and so forth. All right, so after I calculate all that, guess what? This simplifies down to be x to the third plus 6x to squared plus 5x minus 12. And guess what? That is this guy up here. All right. So we know that we have our factors correctly. But what if we weren't sure if these are 100% accurate? Well, we could check if, for example, uh, we put a value, a constant value of 1 in, if that equals 0. So let's do that. That is, if we have f to the 1, like this, well, we could have, this will be 1 third plus 6 times 1 squared uh, plus 5 times 1 minus 12. And if we did that, that would work out to be 1 plus 6 plus 5 minus 12, which is going to be equal to 0. So, okay, we definitely know that x minus one is a definite factor. And now what I wanna do is if I know that x minus one is a factor, well then we can go back to our factor theorem, which is saying to us that if we go and divide this formula that we have up here by x minus one, that we are going to be able to transform this cubic function into a quadratic equation that we will then be able to use our quadratic formula on to find the other two factors. We have the first one, let's find the rest. Okay, so let's clean that up. So I'm gonna do it. And this is our factor theorem. So we'll take x minus one, and then we'll take our function we have here and turn it into a quadratic. So x to the third plus six x squared plus five x minus 12. I'm gonna come in here and erase this part just so I have more room to work around with. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Well, we wanna convert the x into x cu uh, cubed. So we're gonna put an x up inside of here, x squared like that, which is gonna turn this into x to the third. I'm then gonna take to x squared times the negative one and that is going to give us a negative x squared, of course. And then what we have to do is change the sign. So this becomes a negative, this becomes a plus, which means I have seven x squared, right like this. And then I can just drop down to the five x and the negative 12 like that. 
We can then come in and I know to get rid of the 7x squared, I need to multiply x times 7x like that. And if I do that, I get 7x squared plus 7x. And of course, this is negative. This is going to end up being 12x minus 12. And if I go and multiply all of those times 12, that is going to give me a value of zero. All right, so now I have a quadratic equation. And it's very easy to solve quadratic equations to find the other two factors. So I know that one of my factors is one because we verified that one. So now I want to find these other two. Okay, so I'm showing you numerous different ways to find factors of complex equations. So I will use our quadratic formula, which we've used so many times you should have it memorized by now. And this is going to be b squared minus 4ac and square root of what? 2a. And this is going to be equal to negative 7 plus or minus and 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12 square root of that. And this, of course, underneath is going to be 2. And this is going to be simplified down into negative 7 plus 1 over 2 is going to be one of our values. And negative 7 minus 1 divided by 2. And if we simplify that, we know that our other two factors for x are going to be negative 3 and negative 4. So awesome stuff, showed you numerous different ways to simplify this pretty complex equation and find the factors of it. And to finish off, I wanna talk about the leading coefficient test. Now the leading coefficient test is going to be very useful to, and basically what it's gonna allow us to do is to just look at an equation and very easily tell if, how the graph is going to begin meaning is it going to be moving up or to the left or to the right or what have you. And we're also going to be able to determine exactly the same position and direction of the graph as it ends. So if we have a formula or an equation of this form, which of course we do because everything's been that way. Well, what we all we need to know is to take a look at the value for n and if it is odd and this value for a up here is positive, well then we know that our graph is going to fall to the left and rise to the right. And once again, if the value for n, this guy right here, is odd, and the value for a right here is negative, well we know the graph is going to rise to the left and fall to the right. And once again, if n is even, and the value for a is positive, it's going to rise to the left and right. And if even, or if n is even and a is negative, it's going to fall to the left and right. So let me go and show you an example of what that would look like. All right, so let's say we have a function, which I went and pre-graphed here to save some time, is f to the x is equal to x cubed minus two. Well, how do I know just simply by looking at that formula right here that we are going to get the graph that you see on the right side of the screen? Well, we know our degree right here is three and that means that n is odd. So we know that we're either gonna get this type of graph or this type of graph. So what else do we know? Well, the leading coefficient is one this right here even though it's not shown it's one because it's just like known so what does that tell us well that tells us that it is a positive value which is right here so that means that this guy right here is the winner and what does it tell us it falls to the left what does it do it falls to the left and what does it do after that it rises to the right and what does this function do? It rises to the right. All right, so neat stuff. Hopefully you find this as interesting as I do. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.